Okay, it's still November 9th. It's uh, 10:30, and uh, this is Orion's belt. Wanna check down in the middle. I'm gonna center it. I mean camera's on a motion. I'm gonna move it over. I have to hold it on it because it keeps moving. I'm in camera slow motion. I'm holding it steady. So that's the middle star in the Orion's belt. And this is what it looks like. You can see that it's surrounded by orbs. Okay. This is under full exposure. So we can see everything in you know living color. The star is the white part in the middle. That's the nucleus. And the rest is the orb cluster that gives it support. And it's also the orb cluster and the orbs that that nucleus is charging. Okay, it's it's not just that the nucleus can be alone or that the orb cluster can be alone. They both need each other. That nucleus charges all the orbs in the cluster and the cluster provides the orbs with the nucleus. Okay, the nucleus is at a higher vibrations frequency and the orbs are at a higher velocity revolving counterclockwise in the nucleus and the other orbs in the parent cluster revolve, revolve counterclockwise around the entire nucleus and all that revolutions counterclockwise creates what you're looking at right now and that's a star
Okay, so this is full exposure. I'm just going to stop for a minute. And bring back. Okay, I darkened it. Okay. Here's what it looks like. And it's not full exposure. Okay, remember, I just filmed the ones on the power cables. What does this remind you of? Exactly the same thing. This is just in slow motion. But it's exactly the same thing. See yeah, how it shape shifted and it did the frequency change, vibration frequency change. So it went into a lower frequency because the color went darker. And the color is bright, like either white or yellow, like now, that's high frequency. When it goes dark in any color and there's a range of colors they have a hierarchy but whatever color it is in it means it's in lower frequency than when it's, when it's bright and white or bright yellow so that frequency changes on and off you know, all the time, and there's probably a reason for that. It depends how many ores are in the nucleus, how much of a charge they need, how fast the nucleus has to uh, revolve, uh, or the ores in the nucleus, how fast they have to revolve counterclockwise, and what kind of energy output they need. Things like that will determine the color and the frequency and the velocity of the ores revolving around that nucleus and inside that nucleus as well as the ores in the outer cluster, the parent cluster how fast they will revolve around the nucleus all the revolutions inside and outside the nucleus are all counterclockwise all the time that doesn't change. They never go clockwise. Okay. And that's the middle star in the Orion's belt. Remember what that looks like? Because I just filmed the ones in the power cable. They look pretty much the same. Okay. Okay, I'm still in Orion's belt, I just looked at the middle star, okay, here's the little little pyramid and the, and the angle there, okay, that's a half bad bit. Boy, it looks really different than the last one.
but you can see a lot of ores both inside the nucleus and outside the nucleus this one's at a much lower frequency than the one in the middle was okay I'm still in camera slow motion and I'm still at full uh, like the brightest I can make it so that we can see everything there ok so this one's not very happy because it's in that uh, mode that's like a threatening mode like you see clusters down here do it and other stars too it's not the only one that pulls that I have lots of them on record okay but basically this one is different okay let's see it up close with some really big orbs in that one you can actually see them shooting out Okay, those are the ones in the parent cluster. I just want to take a look at the first one. I'm going to move it up and line it up. Okay, this one's even lower in a lower frequency. So the one that with the highest frequency is the one in the middle. But that doesn't mean anything, that's just tonight. We can't say for sure. This one is even this is the biggest one of all of them. Because it fills the whole screen. Okay. Okay, so this one is bigger than the other two. So this is the biggest one. The one in the middle there. Second biggest and the smallest one is the one in the back. The little one. The little pyramid at Giza. Okay, this one's not that much bigger than the one in the middle, but it looks like it's bigger. Let's see if I can make it any bigger. Okay, and it, it, it's definitely bigger, but I don't know by how much. And I'm going to back off so we can see it in action. Okay, I'm going to move it in the middle. They move. It's 
starts to move around. Okay, you see how we change frequency now? Because I'm filming it. You see how it went from very low frequency to very high frequency? And that happened instantly. So, you know, the frequency changes occur all the time. And it's nothing unusual. So that's what we can learn from that. It showed that it can change frequency instantly, back and forth from very low to very high, instantly. So frequency change uh, and uh, velocity and I'm talking about orb velocity in their uh, revolutions around the nucleus and inside the nucleus can change in an instant. It's not so unusual. And they can go from a low frequency star to a high frequency star instantaneously. And that just proved it. So the brightness of the star then it doesn't mean all that much because they can all either, you know, <laughs> see how it can be dark or it can be very bright. So, you know, the brightness of a star is subject to its ones, whatever the ores want to do. That's going to determine the brightness of the star. And it's a normal, natural thing for them to operate at any frequency they choose. And this is proof of that. Okay, they can control their frequency. Okay, they, their vibrations frequency. They can control uh, their velocity and they can control definitely the number of ores inside the nucleus and that means they can control all the electromagnetic energy that it takes to create that star and all the electromagnetic energy that that star can either store or put out as energy and light, whatever it can produce, they control how it does it. And those things that do that, they're ores, because uh, these are all ore cluster nuclei, and the whole thing together with the parent cluster is an ore cluster. And these are the nuclei, the stars. You could, you could see, you see the counterclockwise. See how the ores go counterclockwise? Watch them. Okay, they all had that threatening look to them. They weren't happy stars. <coughs> I guess they don't like to be filmed. But anyway, that was Orion's belt uh, for tonight in slow motion. Okay, that's it. Thank you. This is Super Mush Mouse. Thank you for watching.